After being granted a medical exemption to compete in the 2022 Australian Open earlier this week, Novak Djokovic is currently facing deportation while in a Melbourne immigration hotel. Yesterday, the world number one was denied entry into Australia after the Australian border force cancelled his visa. Novak apparently failed to meet Australia's COVID vaccine exemption standards. Djokovic's exemption was granted by two separate panels created by Tennis Australia and the Victorian Health Department, which gives exceptions to players with acute illnesses or those who are infected with COVID-19 within the past six months. However, it seems like both entities made a mistake in even granting Novak the pass because the Australian border force doesn't really quantify contracting COVID within the past six months as a valid exemption to not be vaccinated. The Australian Government Department of Health actually told Tennis Australia multiple times in writing that a recent COVID infection wasn't a valid reason to not be fully vaccinated. Novak put this on himself because going public about him being opposed to vaccines already put skepticism in the air surrounding whether he truly needs an exemption for medical purposes. You can be anti-vax all you want, but you can't use that as an excuse for not getting to the country, especially Australia, a country that's been extremely stringent about the pandemic. I guarantee you, if he never said anything about being anti-vax at all, he'd be let into the country. However, like I said, those previous comments exposed his true intentions of requesting an exemption in the first place. You can't just sidestep around the rules because you don't want to be vaccinated. That's literally favoritism and elitism. And I'm still questioning why Tennis Australia and the other panel granted him access. Novak should be right where his other anti-vax counterpart, Tennis Sangren, is at home watching from the sidelines. Looking at the current stipulations, after Novak was interrogated by Border Force for eight hours in the airport yesterday, he was transported to the Immigration Hotel in the Melbourne suburb of Carlton. Djokovic's lawyers are working to appeal the deportation and successfully halt to his deportation, at least for today. A full hearing will be heard on Monday, where the defending champ's fate will be determined. Novak could actually be barred from the country for three years if his visa is completely thrown out. In the meantime, both Tennis Australia and the Djokovic party need to submit valid evidence supporting his exemption. A Tennis Australia spokesperson previously said that three other players were already in the country through the exact same exemption Novak was granted. The Australian border force is reportedly investigating at least one unvaccinated tennis player and one official who have already been allowed into the country. Currently, there is a lot of outrage within the Serbian community as a large group of protesters gathered outside his hotel to to send support. Some people even held visuals for the 20 time slam champ. I honestly have no sympathy towards Novak for this situation because like I keep saying, he brought this upon himself by trying to find a shortcut to compete. It is unfortunate that this happened, but it could have all been avoided. I like Novak, but I'm not gonna be crying for a millionaire that doesn't have his wallet and is apparently stuck in a hotel room with a few insects. The big culprit though is Tennis Australia and the Victorian Health Department panels for being incompetent and going against the advisory group's guidelines on vaccination. Fellow 20 time slam champ Rafael Nadal also made some comments regarding Djokovic's visa cancellation. Of course, I don't like the situation that is happening. In some way, I feel sorry for him, but at the same time, he knew the conditions since a lot of months ago, so he makes his own decision. It seems like a rough situation, but at the end of the day, the only thing I can say is we have been going through very challenging times, and a lot of families have been suffering a lot during the past two years with all the pandemic. It's normal that the people here in Australia get very frustrated with the Djokovic case because they have been going through a lot of very hard lockdowns and a lot of people were not able to come back home. From my point of view, that's the only thing I can say is I believe in what the people who know about the medicine say and if the people say we need to get vaccinated, we need to get the vaccine. I went through COVID. I have been vaccinated twice. If you do this, you don't have any problem to play here. That's the only thing. I think if he wanted to, he would be playing here in Australia without a problem. 
he made his own decisions and everybody is free to make their own decisions but then there are some consequences i honestly couldn't have said this better myself now focusing on the actual tennis action rafa made his return to the tour for his first match since last summer's foot injury he took out ricardo's barranca 6275 in the melbourne summer set round of 16. overall rafa looked really solid having a high percentage of first serves and return points won he did have some rough patches in the second set but things were still relatively smooth sailing for the spaniard as he progressed through a 92 minute victory nadal will face dutch mental and greek sport in the quarters Meanwhile, on the women's side, Naomi Osaka stormed past Marina Zaneska 6-1-6-1 to book her spot in the Melbourne Somerset 1 quarterfinal. Though Zaneska didn't challenge her as much as Cornet did, the Japanese woman looked unplayable, winning 90% of first serve points in her 58-minute win. She'll now meet another German, Andrea Petkovic. Simona Halep also looked dominant in her second match of 2022. Crushing compatriot Elena Gabriela Ruse 6-2-6-1. She'll now play Victoria Goyevic. In Adelaide, in what was supposed to be a blockbuster match between two talented youngsters, turned out to be a bust as Ika Svantec totally dominated Layla Fernandez 6-1-6-2 to reach the quarters. Layla was definitely off her game, but the pole looked really, really strong. She'll have to bring that same form tonight against Victoria Azarenka, who backed up her Bedosa beatdown with a straight sets win over Kvitova conqueror Priscilla Hahn. 2020 Australian Open champ Sofia Cannon has had a successful comeback thus far, coming back in her round of 16 match at Adelaide to take out home country hopeful Island Tamjanovic 3-6-7-6-6-3. Kenan was down a set in 5-3 and saved three match points before coming out on top in the two and a half hour battle. It's great to see Kenan getting back to her usual winning ways and it's already looking like 2022 will be much better than its predecessor for the American. Sonia faces a big challenge in her quarterfinal matchup though as she meets world number one Ash Barty. Barty had to recover from a deficit herself fighting back from 6-4-4-2 down to outlast Coco Gauff in 3. Lastly, the ATP Cup semifinals are set as Team Spain and Team Poland will face off, while Russia and Canada battle for a spot in the finals. Medvedev led his country to victory after beating Matteo Berrettini in both singles and doubles. Felix Auger Aliassime sunk Germany's chances, large in part due to a big three-set win over Alex Verev. Denis Shapovalov played his part too, taking out Jan Leonard Struth. Britain and Australia won their ties over the US and France respectively, but did not advance to the knockout stage. That's all for this video, and let me know your thoughts of the Djokovic matter and the doll statements about it in the comments below. Also, tell me what you think of the tennis action so far in 2022. Make sure y'all subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post updates on both the Djokovic situation and all the tennis results down under. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.